Right, we'll cut back in again. So we're home and we're finally gonna do the long awaited review or comparison, more to the point, of the Five Pints Best clone, the clone of the Five Pints beer, and the Five Pints Best. Now bearing in mind, we used the recipe direct from Johnny Garrett, who got it from somebody else, who, uh, yeah, I don't know how, whether it's a genuine recipe or not, but I know a few other people have made this beer. Whether or not they made the comparison, I don't know. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, there's a couple of reflections that I've probably made on camera before today, where I've thought that, yes, the beer is probably a little bit too sweet, and I kind of suspected that was going to happen. I'm hoping, by the way, just on a little tangent, that this road mic is cancelling the wind out. It's a lovely warm day today, but she's blowing. So, yeah, I was concerned slightly about the IBUs, and rightly enough, we came under. Now, I don't think it was the utilisation settings that I've got. Well, it, it definitely wasn't, because I... Uh, I followed the recipe and scaled it almost linearly, actually. So, if anything, you'd have anticipated more IBU contribution to the beer than less due to an improved efficiency of our summarization on a larger than five barrel scale up. But either way, I noticed that the beer is decidedly um, less hoppy than the original. Although, having said that, when I try this, in the pub and I go to White Locks Bar in Leeds where they usually have five points on it's not as bitter as their bottle offering so we'll get the bottle in the can first in the glass first and uh, yeah I said can then because I was just thinking this is going to come out lovely crystal clear because it's a filtered product and of course it's not bottle carbonated whereas I should have really thought about positioning of the uh, logo there a bit shouldn't I whereas this is can conditioned and I have had a little bit of trouble with it clearing up so this has been transported back from the brewery to my house today and it's not had long to settle at all so we're gonna see a little bit of uh, haze in this beer for sure and I'm having to really agitate that to get a good head onto her but having said that if we hold them up side by side the Sun is on my left so it'll look a little bit brighter perhaps what do you think I've only got one branded glass today, which is a little bit, a bit of a silly thing to do. So we're not going to rate on clarity, but in terms of colour, I think that's pretty darn close. Now there wasn't a huge grain bill, so that will make it a little bit easier to dial it in, I suppose. If anything, you know what, apart from the haze, I'd say they'd be difficult to tell apart. What about if I swap hands and... Well, the one, the clone, is always going to look a little bit brighter because it's got that haze in there and it's scattering the lighter touch. So which one do we go in for first? Well, the clone, obviously. So I did cheat a little bit with the yeast as well. I didn't get the yeast that Johnny Garrett recommended. My bad. And usually I'd have put something like Nottingham Ale in there. Didn't. Again, my bad. So I went with uh, WHC Labs, or WCH Labs, I can't ever remember. I went with their um, Old English Ale Yeast. Giving it a whirl, never used it before. And I'm not sold on it, if I'm honest. I've used it in a couple of beers now. And this is the trouble with it. It doesn't want to flocculate. Although it did attenuate pretty much where I expected it to be. So we've got a bit of carbonation rising in the glass, could do with a touch more. The head has all but vanished and I poured it rather aggressively and the foam looks 
I don't know, the, it looks like a wet foam, do you know what I mean? Whereas the foam on this beer looks rather dry, so if I dodge behind the camera, hopefully it'll focus on the head. But uh, it's difficult to explain it, but the foam looks wet on this. So let's see if we can pick up any aroma. Difficult with this wind. Immediately I'm getting the roasty, toasty notes of the crystal malt in there and then the Maris Otter. And that's rather dominant. And then there's a spiciness from the Fuggles hops. And it promises a lot, it really does. If we have a smell of the five points, a little bit more hop on the nose in this one, but it's difficult to get through this foam. I'm just going to remove a bit of foam. Yeah, it smells a little bit greener. Um, I mean that as like uh, meadow grass, not uh, young. Very interesting. So I think I'm getting more on the nose from this one because I know it's malt forward and I'm picking that malt up and there's less head to disguise it. So let's just dive straight in and have a drink. Cheers, ladies and gents, and uh, cheers to Johnny and everyone else for sharing the recipe. I've had a blast making it. It's come down really well in the pub, by the way. It's very nice. It's moorish. Straight away, you want to go back for another drink, but it's lacking that that bite at the back back end. It's almost like a, a soft, sweet finish. Um, it 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 doesn't linger too long. Actually, it's pretty much gone. But usually, uh, with the five points, it's a shorter, sharper, more crisp finish at the end. But nonetheless very quaffable as is always the case with these type of beers uh, when I tried it about two or three weeks ago it was a when I brought that keg home it was a different beast altogether it was far too green it was far too young and quite frankly I, I didn't like it now it's got some age on it. it's matured a little bit in the can it's rounded, it's coming together nicely. If you're a fan of malt forward beers, um, Maris Otter in particular, this is where it's at. But I do think, without a doubt, it could do with a few more IBUs. So, maybe double the boil edition even. That's how far I'd go. Right, let's move across onto the five points best. Um, we've got the ABV, I believe, spot on with both of these beers as well. So I was happy with how it turned out. Like I say, it attenuated to where I wanted it to be. I pretty much hit my targets as far as I can recall. But either way, if I missed a little bit, it's, uh, you know, the distance between the OG and the FG stayed the same, even if it moved up or down the scale a touch. So we got where we wanted to be. Now the bottle from five points is definitely a lot more carbonated and uh, that's probably helping it retain its head a little bit as well let's go straight into it so the malt takes a back seat on this beer and you get that spicy, earthy, floral almost, woody note from the hops coming through immediately. The malt backs it up perfectly, but Fuggles is really at the front of the show for this particular beer. And were I to make it again, I probably will. I'll definitely be tweaking those additions and probably changing the yeast. First time I've used that yeast, I don't know, it might have might have increased the sweetness a touch um, or the perception of the sweetness due to its esters I don't know it's all a little bit uh, of a guessing game really isn't it now this is a lot cleaner on the finish it uh, it's got a sh it's got a not a sharp bitterness but a distinctive bitterness you 
yeah fuggles at the front all the way for this one so as it stands now of course the five points best wins it hands down i'm afraid but that's because this is the beer that we're trying to clone isn't it and we're not going to get there straight away but as far as i'm concerned this is a great starting point and of course we've got all these other variables in the mix including the kit that we use the water that we've got the type of malt that we're using as well i mean my morris otter might not have been malted by the same maltsters as the Maris Otter that they use down at five points, I dare say it absolutely isn't. Mine came from Muntons. So there we have it. I think I will brew it again at some point in the future, but I think I'll make all of the changes that I've suggested. So the yeast for sure, and increasing the IBUs without a doubt. I don't think it needs any more finishing hop on there, I reckon just the bitterness will rein that malt forward character in a touch and make this close to, if not indistinguishable, from the real McCoy. So I'm going to wrap it up there boys. That's another vlog in the bag for me. Managed to get a lot of beer brewed today and the past three days, four days. Uh, we ran out of proof, caught me off guard, bank holidays, we rinsed through it. So I came in over the weekend and just, you know, did what I do and uh, I didn't pull the camera out for it because I was doing a lot of other things as well, like rebuilding the control boxes, which I've talked about in length and I'm sure you're all bored to death of by now. But yeah, uh, that's it, another one in the bag and we'll probably pick the camera up tomorrow morning because we don't have any brewing to do, but we have been to the garden centre the other evening and we've got some hanging baskets and some plants to put into the beer garden so you'll get to see that. And then I'm also going to have a tinker with installing the rest of the heat mats in the brewery. And then there's some other things to start like the barrel aging project, I need to make the stillages for that all upcoming projects so don't forget you can of course follow along by subscribing down below you know the drill i don't often say this but i thought it's worth a mention today i'd like to say thanks to all my new patrons as well who've come on board particularly if you're going to send me endoscopes thank you very much and uh, yeah you can follow me on all the normal socials as well they're all in the description down below thank you very much that was a bit corporate wasn't it Cheers. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, do you like the backdrop of the shed that I made during lockdown? We've got the shed. And then they're all tea towels for the pub. We get through lots and lots of tea towels at work. Oh, I may as well have an outro of chickens, hadn't we? Let's go and have a look at the chickens. Why not? Hello girls. She's a grandma now. She's got to be 40 years old. In chicken years. 90 years old, I guess. Uh, if you scroll back through my videos, you might find one we hatched her. Maybe 2014? 16? They're doing well.